3.2, using parallel lines and transversals, we're on page 11. So we're going to take all of the vocabulary we studied yesterday, corresponding angles, alternate interior, and we're going to determine that there are theorems and postulates when all the lines are parallel or when the two lines are parallel. So I have four theorems here. My first one is called a postulate. It is the corresponding angles postulate. Um, one thing that I, my diagrams do not have that I want you to add are the parallel lines symbol um, because all of these theorems support because you need parallel lines to start with. So corresponding angles postulate says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. So remember I have four pairs, so let's color code them here. I have a set in blue right here, the two blue dots. A set in red. I have to do two red. Um, I have a third set here in green, and I have a fourth set. So I'll do it in black. So those four angles, or those four pairs of angles, are going to be congruent. Next, we have the alternate interior angle theorem. The alternate interior angle theorem. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal to make them parallel, then the pairs of alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. So I have two pairs. I've got one set right there, and I have another set right here. Okay, so they have alternate interior angles are congruent. Next theorem, alternate exterior angles theorem. And it says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the lines parallel, then the pairs of alternate exterior angles are going to be congruent. So again, I have two pairs. I have a set here, and I have a set here. Okay. All right, last theorem is called the consecutive interior angles theorem. The consecutive interior angles theorem. And it says, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, parallel lines, then the pairs of consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So they're not going to be congruent like our other sets. So I have a set here and here. And the, if they're supplementary, they add up to 180 degrees. Okay, they're not going to be equal. Visually, you can tell they're not the same size. I have another set here and here. And then these add up and they equal 180. Okay. So we're going to use these theorems to solve problems. You'll see it show up in proofs and things like that. Okay, first example. If X, find X if line L is parallel to line M. So I'm told they're parallel. Let's go ahead and add that mark, those markings. So in order to set these up, I need to identify a set of angles I can work with and then use one of my theorems. So I have a couple different lines here. Let's extend this one out. That could be my transversal. So we'll see what we have. So I've got information along the lines of the, the, uh, either side of this angle, but I don't have any information down here. So I cannot link together, say, corresponding or alternate interior. Let's look at the other transversal. So when I look at that one, I have an angle information here, and I, I can combine these two angles and, and view this as consecutive interior. So these are consecutive interior. And so if you go back to your theorem, if I have consecutive interior angles, they're supplementary. So let's write an equation to show that they are supplementary. So I can take 70 plus I'm going to add those other two together. Oops. X plus X minus 20 equals 180. Okay, and then we just solve from there. So let's combine like terms. Plus 50. So take away your 50 from both sides. That would be 130. And then divide off your two. So we get X equals. That would be our solution on that first one. 
Okay, number two, given parallel lines, okay, these guys are parallel, let's reinforce that. Given parallel lines and the measure of angle five equaling 65, uh, 65 degrees, find each measure, tell what postulate or theorem you would use. I'm actually going to add, I don't have the number seven on there like you guys have. Okay, now a letter A, find the measure of angle six. So the measure of angle six, uh, so if you compare it to five, five and six are vertical angles. And I know by the vertical angles theorem that they are congruent. So I know that the measure of angle six is 65 degrees. And then the reasoning would be the vertical angles theorem. Vertical angles theorem. Now I'm going to try to always go off of angle five for my description. We could use any of these angles once we calculate them, but um, this is one way to get to your answer. Okay, number seven. So if you look at a comparison between five and seven, they are a linear pair. And I know that linear pairs are supplementary. So I can do 180 minus uh, the 65. And so I end up with 115 degrees for this one. And so the reason is it's called the linear pair postulate. Linear pair postulate. And linear pair postulate. Okay, number eight. Number eight, if I compare number eight here to number five, they are corresponding angles. And the corresponding angles postulate says they're equal. So I know that eight is 65, and this is the corresponding angles postulate. Corresponding angles postulate. Okay. Finally, number nine. Number nine is right here. So I can't go directly from five to nine, but I can use another angle. So let's, um, I'm going to use number seven. So we previously said seven was 115 degrees, and seven and nine are alternate exterior. So by the alternate exterior angles theorem, they are congruent. So I'm going to be able to say that nine is 115 degrees. And I, I can do a variety of answers here, but if I go off of seven, it's alternate exterior angles theorem. Alternate exterior. Okay, let's continue on. All right, oh, my number, I've got number three again. Okay, I'll have to fix that later. But next example, given that the measure of angle one equals x degrees, measure of angle one, let's label that as x. Um, find the measure of angle 2 and the measure of angle ABC in terms of X or Y if Q is parallel to R is parallel to S. Q and R are parallel, R and S are parallel. Um, I also am told 3 and 4 are congruent. So let's do 3 and 4, get the congruent marks. And then 4 is 180 minus X, so let's label that on the diagram. Okay, find the measure of angle two. Now when it says in terms of X or Y, you're probably gonna have X, either X or Y in your answer. So number two is right here. So number two has a connection with Y. So you wanna identify these are consecutive interior. And so the, the consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So if I know that this angle right here is Y degrees, I can get to number two by taking that away from 180. So the measure of angle two would be written as 180 minus y. And that's it, that we don't know what y is. I guess technically we should put parentheses around it and say it's degrees, okay? So I have, I'm gonna put that on my picture now. I have this as 180 minus y. Okay, the measure of angle B, or not B, A, B, C, I'm sorry. A, B, C is right here, A, B, C. Okay, so I want the angle right here. So ABC consists of two plus three by the angle addition postulate. So I previously was told that three and four were congruent. So let's transfer over what four is equal to because it's the same as three. 
And now I can add these two together. So I can take the 180 minus x and add that to the 180 minus y because of the angle addition postulate. The only other thing I can do here is combine like terms. So 180 plus 180 is 360, and then minus x minus y. And so that would be in terms of degrees. So I would just simplify to that point. Okay, I am going to stop here. Um, I need you to open the next video to go through the last two examples, and then you'll be good to go to start your assignment.